This is part 18 of Angular 6 tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss cross-field validation in a reactive form. Let's understand this with an example. Here is what we want to do. Confirm email is a required field. If we do not type anything in this field, we want to display the required validation error. On the other hand, if we have typed something in the confirm email field, the value should match with what we have in the email field. If they do not match, then we want to display the validation error. Email and confirm email do not match. To be able to do this, we'll have to compare two form control values, that is email and confirm email. At the moment, on our create employee form, we only have the email form control. So let's also include confirm email. Here is the HTML of our email form field. Let's make a copy of this and then change the bits that are required. The property name on the form errors object is going to be confirm email instead of email. We don't have this property yet. We'll create it in just a bit. The text on the label is confirm email. The ID of the input element should also be confirm email. So is the value for for attribute and form control name. Finally, we also need to change it within this NJF structural directive and within this interpolation expression. To validate if email and confirm email fields have same value, we need to compare two form controls. If you look at a validator function in Angular, it only accepts one parameter and that parameter type is abstract control. So this means we can either pass a form group or a form control as a parameter. We cannot pass two form controls to the validator function, but what we can do is group them using a nested form group and then pass that nested form group as a parameter. So let's group email and confirm email fields. For that, we are going to make use of the form group name directive. I'm going to include a div element here and on this let's use form group name directive and let's set the name of this form group to email group and move this closing div after our confirm email field. So in this nested form group email group we have the two form controls whose values we want to compare. So we are going to pass this nested form group as a parameter to the validator function so it can perform cross field validation. Now we need to do the same grouping within our component class as well. First let's include a form control for confirm email. The key is confirm email. Default value is an empty string. For now, let's include just the required validator. Now we need to create a nested form group for these two form controls, email and confirm email. In the template, we have already done that grouping and the name we have given to the group is email group. So using that same name, let's create a nested form group in the component class. We are using the group method of the form builder class to create this nested form group just like how we have created this skills nested form group. So within this email nested form group we want our email and confirm email form controls. Let's save all our changes so far and take a look at the browser. Notice now in addition to email form field, we also have the confirm email field. When I touch this field and leave it, in the console we have an error. Cannot read property required of undefined. We have this error because we are missing confirm email property on our validation messages structure. Remember, this validation messages structure holds all the validation messages for all our form controls. Let's make a copy of this email object here and then change the bits that are required. The property here is going to be confirm email and we want required validation error and the validation error message is confirm email is required. We need this confirm email property on the form errors object as well because if you look at our confirm email form control it binds to the confirm email property of the form errors object to display the validation error. So on the form errors object let's include this confirm email property. So just after email let's include confirm email as well. Notice now when we touch the confirm email field and leave it we get the required validation error as expected. 
Now let's type a valid email address in the email field. And if I type an email address that does not match what we have in the email field, we don't have any validation error. So what we want to be able to do now is compare email and confirm email field values. If they don't match, we want to display the validation error, email and confirm email do not match. For that, we need a custom validator function. So in the component class file, let's include a function. I'm going to name it match emails. This is a validator function. So it's going to take abstract control as a parameter. I'm going to call the parameter group because we are going to pass the nested form group that contains both our email and confirm email form controls. This method returns an object with key value pair if there is a validation error. Key is of type string and value can be anything. If there is no validation error, this method is going to return null. To this match email method, we will pass our nested form group, email group. And if you take a look at our email group, nested form group, it has got these two form controls, email and confirm email. So let's retrieve those two form controls from the passed in nested form group. For that, let's create a constant. I'm going to call this email control. And on the passed in group parameter, let's use the get method and then pass this get method, the name of the email form control, which is email. This is going to return us a reference to our email form control. Let's do the same thing for confirm email form control. Let's call the constant confirm email control. And the name of the confirm email form control is confirm email. So all that is left now to do is check if both the controls have same value. If they do, then return null, indicating that there is no validation error. If email control dot value equals confirm email control dot value, then we want to return null to indicate there are no validation errors. Else the values do not match. So let's return an object with a key value pair to indicate there is a validation error. The key can be anything, but I'm going to call it email mismatch. Again, the value can be anything. I'm going to set it to true. Now, here's the important bit to understand. To this match email method, we are passing the nested form group that we want to validate. We usually pass the form control that we want to validate. Since we are passing a nested form group here to validate, we want to tie this validator to that nested form group. In our case, the nested form group is email group. Here is our nested email group. Now let's tie our custom validator function to this nested form group. We do that by passing another object and this object is going to have the key validator and the value for this is going to be the name of our custom validator function. Now another very important point to keep in mind is because we are attaching our custom validator function to the email group nested form group when our custom validator fails the error key that our custom validator function is returning which is email mismatch this key will be attached to the errors collection of this nested form group email group and not to the errors collection of email or confirm email form controls. This is very important to understand because we are going to use the errors collection of this email group nested form group to determine if our custom cross field validation has failed. So within our validation message structure, let's include a property with this name email group. When our custom validator fails, we know it's going to return this error key email mismatch. So let's use that as a property within email group. And the error message that we want is email and confirm email do not match. We also need this email group property on form errors object because the view template binds to it to display the validation messages.
Now to the most important bit, we need to modify log validation errors method to check if our email group nested form group has failed our cross field validation. Before we do that, let's quickly understand what this method is doing. It loops over all the form controls and nested form groups in our employee form root form group. If the control that we are currently iterating over is an instance of form group, meaning if it's a nested form group, then it recursively calls the same method log validation errors. And if the control that we are dealing with is not an instance of form group, that means it's a form control. So it comes into the else block and it's checking if that form control is valid or not. If it is not valid, then for that form control, it loads all the available validation messages from our structure validation messages. And then it checks the errors collection of that form control which has failed validation. So within the errors collection, we will have the validation rule names as the keys. For example, if a form control has failed required validation, the errors collection will have the required key attached to it. So we are checking the errors collection and we are looping over each error key. And for the validation rule for which the form control has failed validation, we are loading that respective validation message into the form errors object and the UI will bind to this form errors object to display the validation error. So the important point to keep in mind is at the moment, this function is checking only the errors collection of a form control. But to determine if our custom cross field validation has failed, we should also be checking the errors collection of our nested form group email group. So let's change this code accordingly. Let's cut everything that we have in the else block and move it above the if block. We don't need this else block anymore, so let's delete that. So with this change, the abstract control that we are currently iterating over, irrespective of whether it is a nested form group or a form control, we are checking if it is not valid. If it is not valid, it comes inside the if block and then we are checking the errors collection and populating depending on that the form errors object with the appropriate validation error message. The UI binds to this form errors object to display the validation error. So let's make the changes required in the view template now. We want to add this bootstrap styling class has error if the confirm email property on the form errors object is true the or email group property on the form errors object is true the. We want to do the same thing with the span element that displays the validation error message. Finally, we also want to display the validation error message we have in the email group property. So let's include another interpolation expression and change the property name to email group. Notice now, as soon as we start to type in the email form control, we see undefined here. That's because I think within our custom validator function, we misspelled this key mismatch. We have an extra T there. So let's get rid of that. Notice now when we start to type in the email form control, we see the validation error email and confirm email do not match right away. We do not want to see this validation error until we start to type in this confirm email field. So let's make an additional check within our custom validator function match email. If the confirm email control is pristine, that means the user didn't have the opportunity to start typing in the confirm email form control. So at that point, let's return null to indicate we don't have the validation error. Notice now, when we type in the email field, we don't see our custom validation error. But when I start to type in the confirm email field, and if that email does not match with what we have in our email form control, we see our custom validation error. Email and confirm email do not match. But when I delete this, we see both the errors. That is the required error and our custom validation error. When the confirm email form control is empty, we only want to see the required error. For that, we need to change the binding we have in the template. 
instead of having two interpolation expressions here, let's have a conditional expression. If confirm email is true the, then display what we have in the confirm email key. Else, display what we have in the email group key. Notice now, when I touch the email field and leave it without typing anything, we see the required error. Let's type in a valid email. The validation error disappears as soon as I start to type in confirm email field. We see email and confirm email do not match. If I delete, we only see the required error. If I type an email that does not match, we see again our custom validation error. If I type an email address that matches with what we have in our email field, the validation error disappears. Here is our custom validator function that we just implemented. That's it in this video. Thank you for watching and have a great day.